15 years ago, I showed up at the microbrewery tasting room, and two guys had started this place, and I didn't know much about commercial brewing, no, I liked beer, and knew it was in my blood, so I had to do something about it. And I sort of learned their system and how things went along, and one guy dropped out, and I bought his shares, and the other one had a lot of things going on, and I ended up buying out his shares, and we decided after doing that, we'd, like I say, take the plunge, open up a brew pub, and take it to the next level and see if we couldn't become successful. I have beer in my blood. I have to do this. If it's not in my garage, I'm going to do it here. If I do it in my garage, I don't get paid. If I do it here, at least I can break even. Let me show you where it all takes place, where, where the which is stirs or brew. Yes, it's a little bit warmer back here, but here it is. Two five barrel fermenters, three ten barrel fermenters, brew house, the grain room. I have probably six, 16 different styles of grain in here. Uh, Canada, Pacific Northwest, Connecticut, and I mill it all here. This is where it all takes place in the beginning. From here I move it in manually to my mash tun. Which right now is <coughs> being doubling for a table. Put it in here with the warm water, let it do the mashing or steeping process. After that, I rinse it, take the wort off the beer or off the grain, move it into my boil kettle, boil it for about an hour and a half, two hours, depending on what, what I'm doing. During that period of time, I add my hops. Because it's only a five barrel brew house, every time I fill one of these, it takes two iterations. It takes two iterations to fill one of these vessels. These are 10 barrels, they're glycol jacketed, all the fermenters are glycol jacketed. But because of this new location, because of what we've been doing, we've actually quadrupled our capacity. All right, <clears throat> grain comes to the mash tun. From the mash tun, it gets rinsed, goes to the boil kettle. From the boil kettle, after it's boiled for an hour, it goes to the wort chiller, where it's reduced in temperature from 170 or 180 degrees. <clears throat> to 70 degrees where I pitch the yeast into the fermenter. At that time, it's not beer, it's only wort. After the yeast is pitched, it becomes legally beer. It has the potential to produce alcohol. Anywhere from 7 to 21 days takes the fermentation cycle. At the end of that period of time, I go through the crashing process, which is a temperature reduction in fermentation, where it goes down to 35 degrees. The yeast will flocculate together, drop to the cone as it has, takes place. It's a clarifying process. I'll run the beer then through my plate filter. And from the plate filter, it'll go into one of my conditioning vessels, which are outside, where I carbonate the beer. At the end of the carbonation process, I go into the kegging process. This is the walk-in. One side, we got groceries for the pub. On the other side, we got beer. And, uh, this is a glorious place. Let's look at the history of the area. We had juice grapes, and we had lots and lots and lots of hops. The Yakima Valley is one of the key providers for the, uh, of hops for the, for the beer industry of the world, not just the, the, the United States. The wine grapes are something that have come into the place. The juice grapes were here first, and as one vintner told me, it takes a lot of good beer to make a lot of good wine. Being a destination place in wine country, the ladies enjoy drinking wine. But at the end of the day, the guy wants a beer. And not just a, a commercial beer. He wants something that was, has some flavor and some taste to it. So he's going to search out the microbrewery. The beers that I have on tap here are thought out. These things are not just thrown together. They're, if they're called a traditional name, they need to be true to style, true to the tradi traditional style.